Paul Muller grew up in Canada, always interested in engineering and construction. By age 11, he had built a working Ferris wheel that enabled him to simulate flight. By age 15, he had built a sports car. That same year, he began designing and constructing a helicopter. His path was set, and his dream was the flying machine. He obtained a PhD in aerodynamics from McGill University, and in 1963, he moved here to join the engineering faculty at UC Davis. In fact, he founded its aeronautical engineering program. In 1975, he entered private industry, and fast forward a few decades, and that brings us to today, where he is chairman of the board of the company he founder, founded, Muller International. Dr. Muller and his colleagues have developed what they call a personal vertical takeoff and landing vehicle. You and I would call it a flying car. Please help me warmly welcome Dr. Paul Muller. Thank you, Lou. Well, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to be here with you tonight and talk about something that's very close to my heart, share experience, a long experience of trying to create a personal airborne vehicle to compete with the automobile. It's also good to see so many faces that I'm familiar with. Uh, it's, I've been sort of out of circulation for some time when you get involved in a project like this, you don't come up for air as often as you might like. What I'm going to talk about tonight is what we call it a volanter. The volanter is a deri derived, the word is derived from volant for ability to fly in a light, nimble manner. And I'm going to show you some different types of volanters that we've developed over the years, some which would be considered very obsolete in today's world but other ones which are even ahead of where we are at the moment and just in the design stage. When I left high school, I wanted to be a helicopter pilot. But as a kid from a farm in Canada, it was not a very high probability. This is back in the early 50s. Uh, and at that time, helicopters were just starting to be used in in uh, Korea, so you can imagine what it might cost to become a helicopter pilot when there were so few of them around. So instead of doing or becoming a pilot, I decided to go to a trade school and learn the various things necessary to build a vertical takeoff aircraft. I went to a school called the Provincial Institute of Technology and Art in Calgary, Alberta, where I became a machinist and a welder and a riveter and whatever else I thought it took. When I was at that school, and my, one of my instructors became aware of my plans for the future, he came up and cautioned me, and he said, uh, do you realize that nothing comes down faster than a vertical takeoff aircraft upside down? <laughs> but that really didn't, didn't deter me. However, in looking back the 52 years since he made that comment, I think he probably would have been better off for me to have given me the advice do you realize that nothing is more difficult or complicated to create than a vertical takeoff aircraft? Because that's been my experience. It is a very complex technology that requires far more than the skills I could bring to it. it requires the talent from many people in areas like electronics and other elements, uh, composite materials, for example. And so th these, these other technologies were ones that uh, were brought together through the effort of uh, many, many different people. Before I get into the trials and tribulations of the activity that I undertook to create this flying car, I'd like to start by just showing you some of the, what the vehicle looks like. You clearly have an advantage. I didn't necessarily realize the advantage you'd have by seeing one here, but still this is just one model of many models we've constructed. I'm going to show you the latest of our products, but I'll also take you back. Many people will remember uh, historically, for those who have been around Davis since 1963, will remember some of the early machines we flew at the University Airport.
This is a vehicle that's, that we are proposing to bring on the market. We're actually starting to produce them this year. We have all the tooling to do that. One of the, the beauties of this machine is that if you don't operate at above 10 feet, you're considered to be in ground effect. And when you're in ground effect, you don't need a pilot's license. So all of a sudden, you have the ability to have a vehicle that you can fly around 10 feet off the ground at up to 75 miles an hour. Uh, it's a fairly low cost vehicle, easy to construct, and uh, has obviously a number of applications, recreational, utilitarian, uh, some para paramilitary applications as well. This is a second type of vehicle that we're working with. Uh, this is a much more sophisticated aircraft. It involves uh, a lot of additional capabilities. The, it's rotable in the sense that it's legally uh, able to ride on the street. Uh, it has many different modes of operation, as you can see in the as the vehicle goes through these various phases from the rotability out to the point where it uh, is flying as an aircraft. This is our latest version. We actually came to this, into this direction rather reluctantly, uh, recognizing that it's not real easy to make a car fly efficiently. And in fact, that is the case. As you can see, the projected air range is only 75 miles because when it's flying, it, it takes over 600 horsepower. But uh, there are people who have an interest in this, and as long as people are interested in uh, paying for the technology to develop it, we're happy to go with them. So this is a vehicle that is under the de design phase right now and could be available sometime in the future, probably at a pretty high price. <coughs> 